Hi! For this lesson, I'm going to read Animals Building Homes by Wendy Perkins. This is going to be the second read, so when I read through it again this time, I'm going to pause every once in a while and ask some questions so that we're understanding what the story is telling us. Remember, this is an informational text, which means it gives us facts about a topic. So this story is all about different homes that animals build, and maybe what they use to build those homes, and why they build those homes. You're going to see a lot of photographs instead of drawings, because the author wants you to see real live things, since it's a fact story. And you're going to find photos. Along with the photos, you're going to find headings so that you know what's going to be on each page. Remember, the headings are what tells us is going to be on each page as we read through the story or what that section of the story is going to be about. The essential question that we're thinking about while we're reading through the story are what are animal homes like? Animals Building Homes by Wendy Perkins. A beaver's home. A beaver is hard at work. It gnaws on a tree trunk. Soon the tree falls. The beaver floats the log to a pond. There the beaver builds a lodge. The beaver piles up logs. It fills the cracks between the logs with mud and grass. The lodge keeps the beaver safe and warm. Now here I see one of our vocabulary words, pond. I can tell it's a vocabulary word because the author put it in yellow so that it stood out on the page. Do you remember from our vocabulary lessons what pond means? A pond is a body of water that's smaller than a lake. Remember, it's usually fresh water, not salty water. So beavers live in ponds. And what they do is they gnaw down the trees and they build a lodge, which is another name for a beaver's house. So let's think about what do the beavers do? What are the steps that the beavers take to build their lodge? What do they do first? Right, they gnaw on tree trunks and they chew on those trees until the tree falls down. And then they take the tree and they float it, the log down to the pond and then they make piles out of those logs. And then they fill cracks between the logs Remember, they fill those cracks with mud and grass. What do you think would happen if one of those steps were skipped? What do you think would happen if maybe after the beaver gnawed down the tree, it just left it lying on the ground? Or what do you think would happen if after the beaver made a pile out of the logs, it forgot to fill it in with mud and grass, the cracks? The lodge wouldn't be made properly, would it? The house wouldn't be the same. Maybe if there's no mud and grass, when it ra would rain, the house would leak, just like our houses would leak if the roof wasn't on properly. So let's think about why are ponds important to beavers? Remember, a pond is a body of fresh water that's smaller than a lake. Ponds are important to beavers because beavers need to build their homes in water. If the beavers don't have ponds, then they couldn't build their homes. Let's see what animals on the next page. The fox. Safe at home. Most animals need a home. Homes keep animals safe from predators. Rain, snow, or hot sun. Some animals live in their homes for life. Other animals live in their homes long enough to raise their offspring or survive hot or cold weather. So let's look at these foxes here. It looks like these foxes are all curled up in their den. And remember, animals build their homes to help keep them away from predators, which are other animals that are trying to hunt them for food. Or they might try to make their home to keep themselves out of the bad weather, whether it's the rain or the snow or even the days that the sun is really, really hot. Now it says that some animals live in their homes all the time for their whole life, but other animals only live in their homes long enough to raise their offspring. Offspring are the baby animals that another animal might have. Or they might want to just live in their home just to survive hot or cold weather. On the next page we have building nests. Many animals live in nests. A hummingbird builds a small cup-shaped nest. The nest is made of moss and bits of spiderweb. A mouse makes a grass nest in the shape of a ball. 
The mouse hides its nest in tall grass or in a tunnel under the ground. Look, we have another one of our vocabulary words, shaped. Remember, it's highlighted in yellow, so it stands out for us. When something is shaped, that means it takes the shape of something else. So in this case, the hummingbird's nest would take the shape of a cup because it says it builds a small cup-shaped nest. So it would look like a cup that you might drink water out of. Why do you think hummingbirds make such small nests? Could it be maybe because hummingbirds are small birds? Hummingbirds are tiny birds, so their small tiny nests probably fit them the best. Now let's look at this picture of the hummingbird nest. How can that help us understand what the hummingbird's nest looks like or help us understand what a cup-shaped nest means? If you look, it looks like this is the outside parts of a, of a cup and then the little babies are sitting down in the cup. Here's the branch that it's sitting on. So I can look at that and I can kind of see how it looks like a short cup. Why do you think the mouse hides its nest in the tall grass or underground? Do you think maybe it's doing that to keep away from predators? Other animals are trying to hunt the mice. If the mice hides its nest in tall grass, it's harder to find because it's all covered with grass. Or if the mouse puts its nest underground, not so many animals are going to go underground just to try to find it. Let's see what animals are on the next page. Oh, the weaver birds. Careful builders. Some animals put a lot of work into building their homes. Weaver birds make nests that hang from tree branches. The birds carefully weave grass and leaves together. Weaver birds use their feet and beaks to tie knots in the grass. I see lots of vocabulary words on this page. I see the word hang, I see the word branches, and I see the word beaks. Remember, the word hang means to be attached at the top of something and to hang down but not touch the bottom. So if you look at this nest right here, we can't see what it's attached to at the top, but we can see that it's hanging down and it's not touching anything underneath because the bird's able to hang upside down underneath it. Remember, branches are those parts of a tree that grow out from the trunk. I like to think of it as the arms of the tree. And remember, beaks are the sharp, pointy parts of a bird's mouth. So, what is the main idea on this page? What is this, this whole section, Careful Builders, talking about? I think maybe it's talking about how some animals work really, really hard to build their homes. A detail that supports that is it tells us how the weaver bird, which is this yellow bird right here, how it uses its feet and beak to tie knots in the grass. So the weaver birds tie the pieces of grass just like you would tie your shoelaces to keep them coming from coming undone. If you look at these pictures, these pictures this picture helps us better understand what it looks like when a weaver bird ties the knots in the nest. And you can see what the weaver bird nest looks like. Let's see what's on the next page. Working together. Animals can work together to build homes. Termites build mounds made out of mud mixed with saliva. Other animals cannot easily break through the hard mud. Polyps are animals that make coral reefs. A polyp builds a limestone cup around its body for protection. The cups of polyps grow together to make a coral reef. Now this is an example of a termite mound. Termites are little bugs, kind of like ants that have wings on them and they like to eat wood. So they usually have like a lot of sawdust around them and in their bodies. So what the termites do is they eat mud, they mix it with their spit, and they build these really tall mounds that other animals can't get into. There's other animals that like to eat termites, like ant eaters and things like that. But they can't get into these really tall mounds because they're hard, like mud, like rock. Break is one of our vocabulary words on this page. Remember when you break something? you separate it into two or more pieces. So think about like if you break your pencil, you have two pieces of pencil. 
or maybe you have a candy bar like a Hershey bar and you break it into pieces you have little pieces of something it's not just one whole piece now these are polyps these animals are the animals that make coral reefs and what they do is they build limestone cups around themselves so the coral reefs are actually alive with these little polyps inside the limestone cups. The limestone cups help keep them protected from predators or animals that would like to eat them. On the next page it says making a burrow. Burrows are holes in the ground where some animals live. Gophers use their teeth and paws to dig long winding tunnels. They make rooms in the deepest parts of the tunnels. The gophers hide their offspring and food in these homes. On this page it says, Home Improvement. Some animals live in homes made by other animals. Chickadees use holes, tree holes made by woodpeckers. Chickadees bring grass and moss into the hole. They build a nest for their chicks. I see some vocabulary words on this page. I see winding and I see deepest. If something is winding, that means it's curving and twisting. So if you look at this tunnel that this mouse has made, I'm sorry, this gopher has made, it's curvy. It's not a straight line, and it drops down into its nest right here. Remember, deepest means the farthest away from the surface of something. So if you think of the deepest part of a swimming pool, that's the part of the pool that... The, the bottom of the pool is the farthest away from the top of the water of the pool. In the section Home Improvement, they're talking about chickadees using tree holes made by woodpeckers. Why do you think that a chickadee would use a hole left by another bird? Maybe because that bird has already made a place that the chickadee could fit into. And so the author uses the title or the heading Home Improvement because all the chickadee does is it moves in and brings little bits of grass and other soft things like moss into the hole so that it can make its own nest. It doesn't actually have to build a nest like some other birds do. Now, let's talk about the gopher's burrow. Why do you think a burrow might be a good home? Remember, the story tells us that burrows are holes in the ground where some animals live. So why do you think a hole in the ground would be a good home for an animal? Maybe because it's out of sight of predators. Those are those animals that are trying to hunt it and trying to eat it. Maybe it also protects it from weather. If it's raining outside, if you're underground, you're not going to feel it. Or if it's a really hot, sunny day outside, you're not going to feel it. Or if it's windy, or if it's snowing, or if it's hailing, all of those things you won't feed it, or you won't feel it. Let's see what's on the next page. Building a home. Some most animals need homes where they can rest and raise their offspring. Homes also keep animals safe from predators. Beavers build lodges. Mice make nests. Gophers dig burrows. How does a polar bear make its den? Well, first of all, let's ask, answer that question. How does a polar bear make its den? Let's look at that picture. What does it look like the polar bear is doing? To me, it looks like the polar bear is digging out the snow, kind of like making a tunnel or making a burrow in the snow or a hole in the snow, like maybe like a snow fort when we play in the snow. So I think the polar bear probably uses its really big paws to dig a hole or a nice big open area in the snow for itself. And den is just another name for a polar bear's home. It's just another name for a hole in the side of the ground or a hole in the side of something that an animal lives in. Well, that's our story, Animals Building Homes. If you want to watch it again so that you can think about some of the questions and the answers, Remember, a lot of these questions will be parts of the questions that are on our weekly test. So listen to the story again, or just listen to the story without the questions. And remember to practice those sight words and those vocabulary words. Have a good day.